Welcome to Women's World Show. My guest today is a Nigerian baby. Feel the blood creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving I could take this crap from seeing to believing Got a taste for blood and my tongue keeps bleeding From the words I spit, so sharp, so freezing So cold, behold, frostbite day Feeling like a well, let's dig into it. You are on the spotlight in Nigeria, making waves across Africa and beyond. How did this whole thing start? I know a bit of your story, but most of our viewers don't. So would you please lead us into it? Well, it's a really long story, but um, I moved to Nigeria about five years ago. Um, I was working for a private equity firm and I was just like a research assistant nothing fancy, um, but it was a very, very good job. It was like Wall Street type level. And um, I got to Nigeria for a project they were working on um, with Union Bank. I met a producer that walked up to me and he was like, hey, do you want to host your own TV show? And I was like, huh? And he was like, yeah, like it's a lifestyle show, yada, yada. And I thought about it. I was like, one of my favorite people is Oprah. So, <laughs> so I said, yes. Why not? Um, I, I hosted two shows on that channel for about three years. And then I got pushed to start anchoring, hosting the business news on another channel. So I was doing all of them at the same time. Um, and then a year after anchoring, which is just last year, um, obviously COVID and all these other things happened. Um, I had left the news network and I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was kind of trying to restructure my whole life. And then, I got a call to go for a movie audition and it happened to be one of the coolest things I've I ever done. Will, I will get to that because that's really the part is like, I'm vibing over it, but wait, what's the transition like moving from Washington DC to Nigeria to start your career, you know, and all of a sudden you had this opportunity, somebody just seeing you and thinking, wow, she could make a good presenter. And what's the transition like? Would you think, would you say that it's easier for you? Well, you know, a lot of times, like people um, attribute success to different things. So some people will say, oh, maybe it's easier for her because of, you know, she had like a stable family. Um, some people will say maybe it's easier because oh, I came from America. So maybe it's easier to get a job in Nigeria. But I, I honestly believe in energy and the universe and all that. And I believe that there are supernatural forces that have really just been on my side. It doesn't even make any sense. But also growing up, I've always lived around. So, I mean, moving from Nigeria at an early age, I haven't lived with my family since I was like 15 years old. So I'm used to like moving and like doing new things. So I moved to college alone from college, moved to New York to do my master's from New York back to Nigeria. At one point growing up, I lived in India. So I've always moved. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of these supernatural forces, I think when people just walk up to you and they're like, oh, hey, you know, we have this opportunity if you're interested. I think those things are blessings. And I and as much I was, as I would want to say, oh, people get lucky because of the kind of background they're from, I also believe that sometimes we have to call certain things what they are. You know, from blessing. one of your interviews, actually, you mentioned that even though that you came from a stable family, kind of a known family, that it wasn't really, it didn't provide that opportunity that people assumed, rather it was kind of challenging for you to prove to people. So why is that? Why would you say that it was really challenging for you, even as you are an ASEAN? Did I, I don't know. your surname very well? <laughs> I can, I can. So I don't know if people watch like shows like Dynasty and things like that. All those stories of like, I wouldn't call it wars within families, but like in every family, rich or poor, you have to mm. prove yourself. You have to prove yourself to your parents. You have to prove yourself to, you know, people that are watching your family and all kinds of things. So there was a lot of that. And also in my family, there were lots of children. Mm. So I kind of had that idea from an early age that I I knew how successful I wanted to be. I mean, I used to watch like 
what's this channel called? I used to watch the travel channel. I used to watch like lifestyle channel. And I always knew that I really wanted to be successful. And I'm like, girl, you're the last kid of 12 children. So you have to work extra hard because nobody's going to come and say, oh, here's a Ferrari. You have to find a way to give yourself those things. And I, I just always knew that I had to hustle no matter what. My dad was also the kind of person that he won't come and tell you, oh, have you applied to uni yet or anything? If you want to sit at home, feel free to sit at home. There's a big help. He, he, you know, he won't stress himself, but if you show him that you're really hardworking, mm-hmm. then you get the perks. But if you're a lazy kid, you know, you can watch TV with him. There's, the chair beside him was always warm for you to come and join him and watch football. Amazing. Well, you, you've you done well for yourself, I must say. And, um, what, you know, you've worked for big brands also, like Black Opal, Remy Martin, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Lancome, yes. And I'm then, um, yes. exactly. But then all these brands that you've worked with, do you think they have played a role in the brand of Edia Eisen that we know today? I know, at least. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I, I think... Um, you, you put in so much work into what you're doing. I don't think anybody wakes up and says, oh, I want to be a brand ambassador. That doesn't make any sense. You have to have a job. You have to be really good at that job and somehow be able to garner an audience because if you have an audience, then you can influence them, That's right? True. So from being able to like influence people, from having people that were following like maybe my fashion, my work, different things I was doing, philanthropy, whatever. Um, when certain brands reached out to me, I literally thought this is not happening. Sometimes I would think it was a scam. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I would think, nope, nope, nobody's pranking me today. But um, yeah, I definitely it shaped my career because I think when Lancome announced that I was one of my ambassadors, it was a game changer. Wow. It, it had been done before by like a brand that big yeah. in Beat, Nigeria. So it was really amazing that they chose to do that. So yeah. Wow. Amazing. Well, um, we're going to talk about uh, your role in African development with your project, EDIA project, but we will continue that right after this break. Before the break, I was just about to ask our guests about her role in the development of Africa with your project, EDIA project, which is International Development Initiative in Africa. I love it. You, it was really, well, idea. Well, when I heard about this, this is really great. But can you please tell us what idea project means? I mean, what uh, it, it is, what it does. Okay, so there's a platform called the International Development Initiative in Africa, as you've said. And the whole idea of the platform is to showcase Africa from a more, I guess, positive and prosperous light because yes, we do have a narrative of, you know, certain things that haven't gone gone right in terms of like governance, corruption and all of that. But we also have a parallel narrative of people that are doing amazing things across Africa. So this platform is basically dedicated to showcasing those people because I believe with more stories like that and more examples like that, right. they basically serve as examples or blueprints for other people to follow. Interesting. Well, what project is Edia? What have you worked on before? You know, what have and what are you working on now? So, so basically, with um, the Edia project, what it is is that we um, it's divided into three parts. The first part is basically the news platform. So that is where we disseminate news stories every day on positive things happening everywhere. Um, in the continent. The second part is the actual IDEA project, which is a documentary series. Um, I'm excited about that because we're currently working on that right now. And um, the first part is going to be 10 episodes. Honestly, the first time I tried the IDEA project, I, I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be because I was aiming so high. I was aiming for about 200 episodes, which is just mad. Um, we're, we're going everywhere, shooting all kinds of things. and. Um, at that time, we were talking to a really, really big news platform, which was supposed to basically partner on that. Um, and I think the, that was also a lesson for me because when that particular platform fell through, I kind of got really discouraged about it. Anyway, the third part is our partnerships and our philanthropy. So that's our giving back. So we do a lot of stuff like recently, I think last week, 
no, the week before last week, we just partnered with a hospital called Massey Children's Hospital. And what they do is they give us a list of um, indigent patients that, are, that can't afford their own care. And what right. we do is we fundraise, so we raise money to be able to take care of those people's bills because a lot of people die in the hospital for amounts as small as 5,000 naira because right. they will not attend to you if you cannot pay those hospital bills. So we've partnered with hospitals, we've partnered with um, uh, programs that are catered towards improving the education system. We've worked with LIRS on like just showcasing awareness on like taxation in Lagos. And we're hoping to do so much more stuff. Um, I'm trying to do something catered towards poverty where we help like in the way thing. Oh first set of soup kitchens in Nigeria. Like, I'm, there's so much that we have on the table right now working towards them. Really you know, I, I love your, it is the Azim, I love the way you're excited about the project. Uh, but at the same time, you mentioned you dreamt so big, but all of a sudden it didn't actually, you know, you had some ish somewhere and you're still very positive about that. How are you able to hold on to that thing that you believe in? <laughs> Honestly, um, I think when when I did have that disappointment, the reason why I was so down was also because at that time I had just lost my dad at the right. same time. I kind of didn't want to do anything. I just I wanted to be left alone. I left my news channel. Um, and I think that was prob probably the hardest thing that has ever happened to me so far in my life. Um, but I kind of realized after. So I think um, so that period um, where I got very discouraged, I was going through a lot we had family issues because we had just lost our dad. I had left the news platform as well because it was a lot to handle, especially because I was traveling to shoot all those episodes at the same time. So it was too many things going on. Um, also, I now kind of just realized that if we are consistent and we do put out good stories, the big platforms will come to us, which is what is now happening again. Um, so I think I'm just going to have tunnel vision and we're just going to keep focusing on the real reason we're doing the work not on the popularity you know that that the work will give the platform not on any of that because i think that noise distracts you from your purpose that's so right just, that's yeah. right you just know it and i love the transparency there thank you well let me talk about your debut movie the neck at the pretty subhead our viewers that don't know this movie made my childhood literally so what was it like for you to act in NECA? can you just highlight who NECA is because i'm certain that our viewers here in mabea or across the world the other part of the world that is not yet in, in nigeria it's, it, the movie is only in nigeria yet if i'm not mistaken so tell yes. us about the NECA. who is she and why how was it like playing her Honestly, um, when I first got cast for the role, when I was first auditioning and all of that, it was very difficult for me because I didn't think I was going to get the role. That was number one. I didn't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> I was not an actress. Eat, yeah. <laughs> Dominant Igbo role. I'm not Igbo. So I already said, ah, let me just audition. Let me do my best and keep it moving. Uh, but every time I got called back, I was like, look, I don't, God, I don't know what you're doing. Why are you pranking me? Like, I don't like people taking me for a ride um but anyway the process of getting that role i knew that i had to put my best foot forward so mm -hmm. we, we had swimming lessons we had acting classes we had wow. dance classes i was working out like a mad woman people on instagram could not understand why i was working out so much i was working out for that role because it involved a lot of fighting i had fight training as well i had Igbo lessons so it, it was a full process of becoming this girl. Now, the part that I had down was Neka Agu, the character I played. Um, in the former movie, she's a woman that was basically sleeping with, like, I guess she would come and, like, kill married men or whatever it is. But in the new movie, I played Neka as a girl who had lost her parents. So she was very angry, um, very discouraged. And then somebody basically comes and tells her, here's a list of the people that killed your parents. And she found her purpose. So for me, well, I was in that kind of space in my life where I was like, why is this happening to me? Blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of feel like I have my purpose again with the movie. So it, it was a perfect synergy. Um, I loved the fighting scenes. It just came natural to me. I had a lot of anger, aggression. And I was like, okay, I'm going to put it into being the best 
NECA that the world has ever seen. The movie was in cinemas from December 18th. Right. Um, and it's slowly just leaving cinemas now, which is March. Um, slowly leaving cinemas now. But it's coming on Netflix. So... Absolutely. So I can't really wait to watch NECA on Netflix. It's like, I'm looking so much forward to it. Um, I want to ask you about how you get out of character because it's something to be that character and get out of it afterwards. But I like the fact that you poured all the anger and aggression that you felt after your dad um, mm -hmm. died. So it's, it's kind of, you had a way to like, ooh, give it all in there, you know, so... I'm looking forward to hear more about that, but um, our time is almost up, so we'll continue right after this break. Welcome back. EDA, it has really been interesting to have you here on Women's Watch Show. Um, but before um, we get all into it, I'm super excited to, you know, to watch NECA on Netflix. But mm -hmm. how did you get out of character, before I wrap that part up? How did you get out of that character, Nega? Getting out of the character was actually harder than getting into the character. Right. Because I was waking up some mornings and shout and hearing action. So like, <laughs> and, this was, <laughs> and this was even on days that we weren't filming. In my sleep, I was acting. Like in my sleep, I was like fighting, running, you know, doing all this stuff. And I would wake up and I was just, and then for a while when I got back home, I was really quiet. So people would ask my brother what's wrong with Idia and he'd be like, oh, I can't tell you <laughs> because nobody knew I was NECA for a long time, but it was really hard to get out of character. Um, oh. I think I'm time solved it. Interesting. Well, you know, on IG, um, you actually are the glam. You make, your IG is really pleasing. It's exciting to watch your growth. I think it's really lovely. And I know that a lot of young girls look forward. They really want to be Edia, like be like Edia. So let's say, do you feel pressured on all these expectations around you? Do you feel like you have to be a certain type of girl to keep pleasing people? Or how do you keep being you in this whole glamorous IG world, you know? To be honest, there's a stereotypical answer and I finally just feel like I don't have to give that answer. So here's the truth. The truth is that these days I do feel pressure. Um, I remember when I was always posting about work, people complained and they were like, well, we want to see a more um, glamorous side of you. We want to see a more intimate side of you. And then you give them the glamorous side and the intimate side and the new followers are like, oh, we don't see her work side. So it's, it's a lot. And I think my biggest lesson from everything has just been that you have to do exactly what makes you happy. You have to do exactly what you want to do, because if you allow people to dictate your moves, you're going to end up very unhappy and very confused and you're going to end up all over the place. So I think um, for me, if I was adv advising young girls, I would tell them to have a, a definite plan for themselves and stick to that plan, like focus on your plan completely. People will swear you left and right. So you have to have your own focus um, and yeah. This is That's a perfect right. answer. It can't be more perfect. It's just perfect. Well, um, see, talking about intimate, do you have, does Edia have anything that she want to spill about intimate <laughs> relationship? <laughs> I would say. Okay. Because see, I have to ask this question. How, like, how can I interview Edia Eisen and you don't ask about her relationship? Are you in a relationship? Are you seeing somebody? I'm currently um, speaking to somebody, hmm. but you, like Cardi B said in her song, if there's no ring on my finger, you're not going on my gram. So basically, yes, it's, it, <laughs> he has to earn the right to, you know. <laughs> so if you want to put a ring on it, <laughs> just put a ring on it. <laughs> Exactly. I'm sure Period. he. I'm sure he watched this. I'm sure he's like, oh, oh, so I need to up my game. <laughs> <laughs> well, the girl with the back. See, I really, I love. I, I've, I've met you in person, so I've, I've felt your vibe. Even though we haven't spent so much time together, but I felt your vibe. I felt your, you know, authenticity. I think that was that really meant so much for me. So, what's next mm -hmm. for Edia? What is coming? 
I think um, right now what's coming is obviously the, the Idea Project. I talked about those episodes are coming ASAP. I also just landed another movie role. So yes, so hopefully um, people will see more on their screen. I'm also thinking of kind of going back into TV presenting, but not um, as a nine to five, just because I don't necessarily have, um, I won't be able to be as flexible if I go back to a formal um, station or network. So yes, look out for me um, in terms of my own show and in terms of the idea project and acting. Yes. Oh, amazing. Well, you are an empowered woman and I cannot talk to a beautiful empowered woman, woman like you without asking you, how do you think that empowered women should or can empower other women? I honestly think that women, um, we have this huge facade that we put out where we are like, oh, you know, women support women, yada, yada. And I think that to an extent, it's true. There are women that support women, but um, I think we can do more. I think, I think we should put our money where our mouth is. I think we should put action behind our words. It's not about hashtags. It's not about taking pictures together and smiling. I think it's about genuinely coming together and having measurable objectives, having milestones that we break together. I think people are too interested in wanting to be the first to do something. We need to understand that there is more power in achieving those milestones together. If you're the only black woman in a room, you should be ashamed of yourself. If you are the youngest woman in a room, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should want more women to climb up that ladder. And it's something that I, I'm sad I realized late, but it's something that I want to work more towards. Genuinely supporting Genuinely. other women, not just saying it. So, yeah. Perfect. See, um, I can't agree any less. You know, um, what, let's talk about the, okay, this is actually close to my final question or rather my <laughs> final question. So <laughs> let's speak into existence. If you had to say, I want to work with this brand, can you speak something into existence here? Which brands, <laughs> who do you want to work with? Which brand do you want to work with in, in Mabea, in the, around the world? Who? I want to be the global brand ambassador for Coca-Cola. It's been one of my dreams since I was mm. a very little girl. I want to work for um, a sports brand like Nike as their brand ambassador. I want to, you know, um, be bigger in terms of my deal with Lancome. I want to, they, they do so many amazing things in terms of charity work and all of that. And I wish I could be a huge part of those campaigns. I wish I had a stronger, more passionate following um, that could take me to, you know, all those goals I have. I want to live in Beverly Hills. I want to have my own house. I don't want to wait for some guy to do it for me. So no, there is no Prince Charmin to come and rescue Edia. She's on the way up. See, thank you so much. This has really been inspiring. This is insightful. I got to know more about you. And I'm super happy that you agreed to give us this interview. Well, last question. What final advice would you give a girl out there who just watched and think, wow, she's amazing? I would say um, admire people and, you know, pick what you can from their lessons and their journey and their stories. But um, don't idolize anyone. I think um, focus on your own growth. Mm. Um, focus on being you because um, we have too many gimmicks. We have too many fakes. We have too many um, people that are too similar because they're, um, I guess a lot of times, a lot of us are not necessarily really being ourselves. So, yeah be original this is really very lovely thank you so much for your time once again and um i will see you around when you are my bear you know i'm your girl <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to you visit should. again you should thank you. thank you so much thanks clara thank you thank you bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs> what a perfect interview i hope you are inspired just like i am it's all about going for that wish you want and giving it all be the best of it and don't give up i will see you on the next episode of women's world show with me clara crumberg